Welcome back, everybody, to the Meet the Bus podcast. I am your host, Jeffrey Reckis, and today we are back for episode 24. And this week, we're going to be continuing to introduce the members who will be following for the Performer Summer Series during this 2024 DCI season. We got a couple more episodes before we take a small break from May, but for right now, let's introduce our our guest. Excuse me. Let's introduce our guest for who we got on the podcast this week. So my guy who I'm having on this week for the podcast, he's been a mellophone player for the Pacific Crest. 2022 and 2023 he will be with them this summer we will be following him for our perform performer summer series we need a new name for that names drop it in the comments below we need new suggestions we need names regardless ladies and gentlemen please welcome on alberto paulino welcome onto the co- podcast good sir oh my god my english is terrible oh my gosh welcome onto the podcast oh, yeah, how are you, you for, doing i'm doing good yeah thank you for for having me for selecting me absolutely 100 yeah. percent. first off i apologize for my hosting good lord i hope i can get myself out the gate there <laughs> but yeah we're man good, good. <laughs> listen we're just here for the good time <laughs> but regardless man um why don't you introduce yourself to the people kind of let us know where you're from what you're up to right now um yeah just you know what you got going on yeah so um again so my name is alberto uh my friends call me beto so we're, we're cool with that. So mm-hmm. um, right now, um, I'm in the process of um, like transferring schools. I'm mm-hmm. going to be transferring to the LA Film School, so I'm excited about that. Um, right now, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of sick right now. So if I mm-hmm. kind of sound weird or nasally, so that's that might be a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but right now, chilling, working, doing the music thing. Excited for drum corps. Hundred percent, dude. Yeah. It's allergy season. It's kicking in, dude. I hate it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm the same way, man. But um, kind of kicking us off here. Uh, first question I kind of like to you know ask everybody when they come on the podcast. You know, um, again, this is going to kind of be more of an introduction episode because Alberto will be back with us for the summer with the summer series. But to start us off here, how were you introduced to DCI? Yeah, so um, I was introduced to DCI. This is like my freshman year of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, I did band in middle school and then I went into high school and they're like, hey, you're going to do summer band. I had no idea at the time. I thought band in middle school was just always sit down band. Mm-hmm. And so in my freshman year, I was like, oh, I have to go to band camp. I have to do marching band. <laughs> and, and while we were, um, the band director at the time was like playing like tons of like drum corps shows that he had like on like CDs mm-hmm. and stuff and he was like hey do you guys want to go to the Rose Bowl this is like in 2017 oh, wow. but we need like this many people to go and so I never went and so <laughs> but that's where I kind of started hearing about drum corps uh-huh. and the first like actual like live show I went to go see was uh like in 2019 I was at Core at the Crest at the Rose Bowl I saw wow. all those like, I, I was at like all those shows that was like the coolest like experience like ever that was like oh yeah this is like uh, I think that's I can, wild. I, I want to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like a whole, like, that's kind of crazy. Cause I performed in that one. <laughs> now, yeah. A lot and of now the- you're, are they still doing the Rose Bowl this summer, by the way? I know they've been kind of like taking some shows yeah. away, but so, are they? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So here's, that's kind of been announced already, but like the kind of rundown is we couldn't get the, we couldn't get the Rose Bowl this year. So <laughs> we're still doing Court the Crest, but we're going back to where we had Court the Crest originally, which is Mount San Antonio College. Oh, okay. And yeah. Yeah. So we're still doing Court the Crest, just not at the Rose Bowl this year, unfortunately. Yeah. Is the Stanford show? Have you gotten to do the Stanford show? I have gone to the Stanford show. Yeah. Damn, dude. That's the one West Coast show I never got to do. Really? Yeah. But I always heard the one thing I always heard about it, though, isn't it like the box is like off centered from the 50? That's like everyone's biggest. Yeah, like, so the box thing I always hear it's about. Just, So the box is just crazy high. Like, yeah. that's the thing I'm just super worried about at Stanford, where it's like... You got to uh, break at, your neck to get to the box. <laughs> at, PC, at, at PC, they're like, you need, to, you need to project to the gods of Olympus. Like, that's like how high, <laughs> like, that's, that's how high the box is. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's the, that's literally the one I always wanted to do as a Stanford show. I got to do, I got to do the Rose Bowl. Uh, I think we did, like, a couple other, like, small California shows, but that was the one I never got to do. Um but speaking of pc how did you find your way to pacific crest is it just like a location thing being on the west coast or was it kind of just like seeing them when you went to the rose bowl show and you were just like 
that that's really cool. Like I want to go do something like that. Like this, like this group's close by or something. Yeah. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a little both. So um, at the time, like in little like high school freshman, me was like, oh my God, like Santa Clara Vanguard, Blue Devils, wow, these are the cool people. Yeah. And so when I went to go to the Rose Bowl in 2019, I was like, I'm super excited to see these groups. And then I saw PC take the field and like ever go on. They had like, like the triangle props that lit up mm-hmm. and it was the first show they had a like uh epilepsy warning at the start of their show i was like <laughs> what's what am i what am i about to watch like yeah like, <laughs> and so i saw that i was like wow like that kind of put pc on the map for me like i knew yeah. of pc but i never like was i wasn't like there for pc like following him closely like yeah. the like top groups yeah and yeah. i saw everglow and i was like oh my god and this is just this is at the rose bowl and i was blown away yeah. like it was and uh, me and a good buddy of mine were like, "Oh, we we're gonna do PC together. We're gonna do drum corps together." That's and it. so and so yeah. Now now we do. Um, so it's it's kind of it's kind of a surreal thing where it's like. And also, I marched with people who marched in nineteen. So it was also really just like, it was a very like full circle moment for me. Kind of wow. How and many people so, from nineteen were there in twenty two? Um, not so many in twenty. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there, there was some in twenty two, but there was a, there was more that came back in twenty three. Like at least like um like mellophone players that came back from twenty nineteen, because right. I played mellophone and so I got to talk to them a lot. But yeah, so, but that was again full circle moment. I was like, wow, this is the show that like made me want to do drum core and made me want to audition for PC. And now I'm marching wow. with those people that did those shows. That is nuts, dude. Oh yeah. my god. Mm-hmm. Uh, for your rookie year, um, I heard that like just from like a source kind of like on Reddit, people talking about 2022 uh, Pacific Crest, that there was like over 70% of like rookies, like drum core rookies overall in that season. Yeah, honest. Yeah, if I had to, if I had to put it to percent, I'd probably say kind of like that. There was a lot of first year. So like that, that, that seems like the common like consensus for a lot of people or just a lot of groups. Cause like last episode, same kind of deal with Spirit of Atlanta um like with 2021 and 2023 like especially for their last season like they had like the number was like over 130 rookies for 2022 when you're coming in as a rookie and there's like you're like meeting people a lot of new like a lot of new people as well a lot of first time people does that kind of like help you out kind of relax in the situation of like okay there's a lot of people who are doing this as well for the first time because i know like Walking into an audition room and doing drone core for the first time can be very like nerve wracking. I mean, yeah. So uh, I'll talk about that, and then what you said also about like auditioning kind of made me remember something too. If mm-hmm. I'll talk about that if I remember it, but yeah. Um, yeah so because my my buddy who plays trumpet at PC, he did PC in the year twenty one, oh. and so he was like really pushing me to like do that year with him, and. I didn't, I just couldn't afford it. And I was working mm-hmm. at the time. And so I was like, you know, like next year. And so I, I promised him next year. And so I went to the auditions mm-hmm. and it wasn't like a, I wasn't, it was a weird thing. Cause it was like, oh yeah, there's a lot of new people that are also like, don't know anybody, but also yeah. I see him and he knows all the vets from like 21 that are coming back to audition. So it was like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. So like, yeah, there's like, I don't know people, but like he knows people. So it was like a, it was like kind of helps thing. you out, kind of get into the fold kind of yeah he he introduced me to some people but also just seeing him go off with like friends i was like oh cool like this is gonna be me like this could be me right yeah that's then, that's always really nice to have yeah and then yeah something that kind of helped me a little bit also was just because there wasn't a lot of people auditioning at the time oh. like i'll say this now like we started we started like move-ins with eight mellophones holy yeah. shit yeah so that wow. was in, in 22 yeah so there was eight and so people that like, came and went so the people that stayed were like, okay, these are the people that are gonna. Did like, you lose any from the starting like eight that were there? Um, from the starting eight, I don't think that we did. Actually, Wait. we did. We, actually, we did. I I do remember we had. Oh, rip, dude! And yeah, we we did lose one. But the thing is, we lost. We lost him because he he wanted to focus on school, mm-hmm. and he got a contract, and so he just didn't show up to that. And it, it is what it is. People people got to do what they got to do. You know. This is just like a fun, 100%. fun, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, and we eventually had like a full like sixteen member horn line by the end of the horn. How line, long did it take line. to get to a full mellow line? Full mellow line, I've like, I think, I think 
Texas, like Texas, Oklahoma. Oh my God. This is like Texas. We got, we had the full 16. And it was, unfortunately as it is, I think we only ever had a full 16 medals on the field for like a total of like four shows because <gasps> people kept getting sick and like injured and stuff. So yeah. So oh no. that was, it was, in, it was, in, it was just 2022 was a year for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, did you guys have to deal with like covid like did you guys get a serious case of covid going around or is it just like people getting just like other random sicknesses so um there was we got covid two separate times in the 2022 oh, season no. so we caught we caught covid during this is spring training we were in Merlo mm -hmm. valley and we're uh, we have we have like we call them COVID crew. We have COVID crew one and then COVID crew two. COVID crew one <laughs> was like contained to like, I think about five members. Yeah. And so that wasn't, we caught that early, early on. Yeah. Because we had like testing. I think I, I watched the the episode with the other guy from, from Spirit and we had yeah. to like get tested before we go like ate food. And so we caught that like immediately. Wow. And so it was like five people and then no one else got sick. And so we continued tour like as like we went but we caught it again during our free day in san antonio oh and no people went, yeah so i think it's um i don't remember the reason or if we ever found out a reason but i know some members like i think they went to go see a movie and so mm -hmm. like that's not the best environment because there's a lot of people sitting around and, and just, like it's the drum core pool of just every yeah. drum core and all it, the yeah. germs that we carry already like in a regular season like all those drum core kids going to like the mall in san antonio oh, like that's yeah. already so many germs to begin with but then you add like covid coming in and like you know if any one person has that that's just gonna get around in a movie theater of all places yeah, <laughs> like and it, it, oh. it, it did get around there yeah. there's a, there a lot of cores i remember the crossman uh we had to do like some standstills because of um, yeah. uh because of that yeah and then after that it kind of kept moving around because we we would think that we would catch it and then mm -hmm. people would be like asymptomatic and so Ooh. that yeah Cause like pe people are to like, at least at the time COVID symptoms. And so yeah. like, during the second time round, we thought we got it and then we kind of eased up on it, but we kind of mm. didn't catch it fully. And so right. people were just getting sick, more sick and more sick and more sick. And then I kind of got it around. I think, I think I said, Ohio, I really don't remember. Mm -hmm. And but like towards the end of the season, though, yeah, yeah, towards the end of the season. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember it was, it was a very stressful cause it took me 10 days to recover and yeah it took me 10 days to recover so i was like and the day i recovered was the day of um like like semis and so i was like oh wow i finally i get to take the field did you get to perform in between those 10 days or were you just completely you were out until you were cleared um so i from what i remember and this could be wrong uh -huh. but just from what i remember after a certain amount of days um they um our health team they would clear you and from what the cdc would say that you mm -hmm. would like um that you wouldn't like show any symptoms or like would be contagious after a certain right. point mm -hmm. and so we waited a bit after that as well to start reintroducing like people back and going back to rehearsal but right. they had to like take it very easy because like you're like because people's lungs you're not used to it you're gonna like overwork yourself right like because you like you haven't done this you like, already get tired anyway yeah. when you have COVID. like you're already generally like oh, exhausted yeah. in your body anyway no yeah so, that's so just, yeah keep going no yeah <laughs> no yeah but um yeah so i i sat out for a, a lot of shows and i well we didn't have that many left but i think i sat out for like i think three mm -hmm. and even in um even in like a in military park in Indy, people who were cleared, there was like the like the big like brass circle, and then there was like a tiny like few of us that were like off to the side because we couldn't uh -huh. be with them, and so that was like a damn. I thought damn. I was again. I was like, damn, I'm gonna like this is gonna be my rookie year. I'm gonna have COVID. I'm not gonna like be in this thing. This but, moment. Yeah, and I like look like fate or whatever. I I got cleared. Maybe I didn't have it tested negative. I last final day I got to perform took the field and that was like the best like best moment of like my life holy honestly. shit that's incredible yeah. like <laughs> that's yeah. amazing and it's just damn dude i couldn't i would not know what to do with myself because i remember 
my rookie year, I got norovirus, like compl- like a little. It's obviously way different beast mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. COVID. COVID is on a whole different level up here. But like norovirus, still like bad sickness. Like you got to be out a couple days. And like, mm-hmm. listen, I'm not trying to expose no med teams out here, but I definitely mm-hmm. also like I sat out for like one day of norovirus, and I was definitely supposed to sit out for like three. And I just went right up to the med team, and they, I was just like, so I'm gonna go back in tomorrow. And they were just like, no. um, no, you're not like you were gray two days ago. Like you didn't, you looked, you were pale. You were throwing up your whole body weight. And I was like, I'm going to go back in tomorrow. I'm like, I'm going to go back in. You just watch me see how I'm doing. And if I can't make it, just pull me out. And I just, yeah. <laughs> so this season I was like, no, I'm going, well, <laughs> I, I would not make it in the COVID era. The COVID era, yeah. they cut me. No, but that's <laughs> they would that's like the thing is, that's like the attitude of like drum corps performers, you know, like there's like, yeah. you feel bad when you're on the sidelines. It's like, Cause like, yes. yeah, it's, it's insane. And the thing is that was totally me too, but for like a completely different reason, like my rookie year, I also just got, I, I sprained my, like a tendon in my foot and I oh. couldn't move. And so I was like, damn, okay, cool. Like if you're off it for like a week and I was like a week, yeah. we're in spring training. I was like, how am I going to be out for a week? We're like learning. Drill. When did that happen for you? This is um very, this is very early in the season. Ooh. Yeah. So I like very like, very like first year rookie mistake i um we weren't as like lenient on like conditioning and like being like being ready for spring training and like mm-hmm. the beast that it was so yeah. i wasn't ready for like the amount of like stress and strain on my body that like throughout like all the, like, the crazy amount of hours that we had and so i just ended up getting hurt and that happens mm-hmm. a lot for like first time members who like aren't yes. used to it and so i was like damn and so this is just very early on and during that week i would try and find my ways to like sneak back in and learn my drill but mm-hmm. that doing that caused like my one week recovery to be like three weeks so i kind of ruins just, that yeah because just but because i was like damn no i don't want to like learn my drill like right while we're doing reps i want to learn my drill while we're learning drill and so that's kind of what's what i did and it was unfortunate but i i made it through that point and i didn't learn my drill so damn dude mm-hmm Oh my goodness. So like that, that for you, like kind of happened in spring training, that little injury for you. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. When, mm-hmm. so like you were still able to like be in and everything, but when were like, when were you fully like recovered from that? Uh, once, um, it's, I was fully recovered cause I had a, our, our health team and staff kind of were like, Hey, we know what you're doing. And like, you have to like, listen to us and take the yeah. time to like, sit out. I know it sucks. Recover. And it was, this is at a point where we weren't really doing a lot of changes and we were just doing, um, we we're adding stuff like choreo and like a lot of like cool, like body movement, like pre-show stuff. And so we're like, yeah. we're not even learning any drill. You can watch from the sideline and still learn, but you have to sit out. Yeah. And like, and so that's what I was doing. I was doing like the, I had like a band for my like foot and I was like, you got to do this, this recovery stuff, so like stretch it out. And mm-hmm. it'll be fine. And then after I got over that point, then I was like, okay, cool. Then they get back in fully. And then I was back in fully. Wow, dude. Oh, my God. See, and it's just like, uh, it's funny from the outside because a lot of people who don't like are not familiar with the activity wouldn't know that like injuries like that now, like it's so important to have. And it's just funny just to like plug, but like Julia Robles has been on the podcast. Yeah. She was here for episode 20 and now her being like a physical trainer and everything there and whatnot, she's on the team, but like her doing like her physical training program and everything. I know she's got y'all in shape. Like I know she's got, I, should, I know she's really, got y'all right, yeah, yeah. but that's just like, it's so crucial to have that in the season because I was very fortunate to not ever get injured. But like, I mean, I also wasn't smart with my body in the off season. It's so important now with the level of like difficulty with the stuff that cores are trying to do in shows, especially you guys as well. This past season, all the stuff you were doing, I mean like two and a half minutes of the beginning of the show is all body for you guys. And it was like incredible. It was beautiful right before that opening hit. And so much of yeah. that requires so much demand from the body. And my dumb ass after my rookie year, I lost like 60 pounds. Part of that was like norovirus and I threw it all up. But like <laughs> when I went home, I'm like, bro, I love food. I'm like, I'm going to eat. So I gained yeah. all 60 pounds back plus. And it's like, yeah, let's go do drum corps again. And it's like, (laughs) so like, yeah, I would, I would never knock on wood. You know, I never got a full blown Mm -hmm. injury or anything like that, but like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I would always get a little like shin splint action or something like that. Um, 
But for 2022, I wanted to ask a little about, ask a little question about a moment. I saw this video of you guys performing in this, it was called like the Austin Round Rock Show uh, for 2022. And there was like the prop malfunction. It was basically like this minute clip where it's showing this part. I don't know if you remember this, but like maybe we can, I can maybe like put it up on the screen real quick. Drum core. Oh, prop the tarps. Oh, yes. So oh, my God. I don't, I don't oh, know like that. It's God. right around here. If, any, if you guys yeah. are the screen, oh, no. right here is where the malfunction is happening. Um, but yeah, we're just going to watch a little bit of this. I remember this exactly now. Right here. This is like your drum core nightmare. <laughs> this oh, is your drum yeah. core oh. nightmare. This is what you don't want to happen in a show. <laughs> oh, like I'm holding my breath. Every person marching by this. Like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh my was, God. Okay. So do you remember, no, do you yeah. remember this moment now? So, Cause when you, I forgot that that's what the video was titled. Cause you yeah. said prop function. I was like prop. And then I saw it was the tarp. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This, <laughs> this. <laughs> so what Everyone happened was... with that? Like, is there something underneath the tarps or like um so there was nothing there was nothing underneath the tarp i think because we, we had to set up the tarp before we roll on the the chair right. uh-huh. and so it just when we were rolling it on it just ended up being like that and we just didn't have time mm-hmm. so someone didn't fix it or someone didn't notice it because i think mm-hmm. on the other tarps we had like some weights on them yeah but for the chair tarp i don't think we did because we had to roll on like the the section that the chairs you know right and so and it just ended up and people were tons of people march on it and so it, the it just, just gets kind of like worse and worse. rolled up a little bit yeah a, a little bit but so many people fell <laughs> so many people tripped on that tarp and uh <laughs> we, this video comes out and we see it and then everyone <laughs> i say everyone but everyone's like adding sound effects to the like falling sounds <laughs> and they're posting it in, on our slack <laughs> and they're like zooming in and i'm like they're making edits with this night and we're like oh my gosh this is it was oh no. it was a nightmare when it happened and but after that it was kind of like joking around with yeah. like the people who like because they kind of like were laughing like at it now because at the time the people who like tripped they're like oh they kind of feel bad you know You're right like, this is during the show like it's yeah. kind of it's, it's embarrassing it's a it's a very like hard like time to like that happened you know like the so, like, the guy now, who fell in the beginning of the video i fell for him so bad when i saw that because he was just like you could feel the nervousness start to like when he falls you're like get up, get up, get up. <laughs> yeah that it, it happens man like yeah and so people were making the and i i will say the the people with the edits and the sound effects and the memes they, it was all in good spirit and people it was never like a like a like oh we're like making fun of you because you fell like no. people were like people still have those videos and they look back and like they laugh and yeah that's yeah, why i'm that laughing because it's funny because i'm like listen that when it would night, happen yeah. to me if it ever happened to me which like dude i've had moments where like i don't know if you've had a moment in a show where just something has gone completely i've had a couple moments where like i remember allentown 2017 at the end of the show we just had a normal snap down classic drum corps snap down and i go mm-hmm. snap down and my valve like my ring finger on my left hand i snap mm-hmm. ring like ring just falls out and like oh no <laughs> and then just like falls out no. that like and i'm like close to the end of the show so i have to keep going and it's like one of those things where you have to like dive down as you're marching scoop it and like while you're marching and doing everything like putting the valve back in yeah like biggest nightmare moment of all time and also all of my things happened at allentown so i don't know what is up with allentown <laughs> and if we're beefing or not but like mm-hmm. i had a thing also in 2017 where like again another snap down moment and then it was like you know a couple steps marching and then it was like a running into like kind of a flutter set because we're going to start pushing props whatever and like mm-hmm. we snapped down i start jazz running and then i start running and my mouthpiece just like as i'm running flies out to the right and it's just completely and the thing is is if that ever happens in a show what the staff's always going to tell you is like don't grab it leave it alone yeah that's it you're mm-hmm. done you have to go yeah. do the rest of the show without mm-hmm. it now no, I literally run 
I wish they got a video of it, but I literally run, it falls out. I run back. I turn around, whole circle, run, because everyone else is running. So I'm like, fuck. But I'm the only one that's running against everybody. And I'm like, all right, cool. Snag my mouthpiece, put it back in. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. A few, yeah. People if people have those moments, man. Uh, I had a, yeah, yeah. I, I even like, even me in 22, I fell out the Rose Bowl. Like every, you felt everyone, the Rose Bowl? I felt the Rose Bowl in 22 my rookie year, oh, man. Oh man. Yeah. What happened? Like, like how did that happen? Um, it's like a it was it was definitely and everyone's like, if you fall out the Rose Bowl, it's not the it's not the field's fault. It's the technique. You gotta have good technique and then the, the technique will save you. That's what they always say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not because it's not because it's actual grass and that yeah. it's wet or anything, or like people have marched on this already. Right. It, it kind of is, but also it was. It definitely was my fault. I'm not gonna lie because we were fluttering, mm. and we were supposed to turn around backfield. And as I was fluttering, I just, I just like slipped and fell. Yeah. But I got up in time for us to do our back, like turn backfield and like march forward. So it, yeah. it was just like a it all just worked out. Drop, and then I was like, yeah. So it wasn't. But I remember being like super, like, oh my god, I can't believe I fell at the Rose Bowl. My mom's watching. <laughs> like and like so the thing like, is it's like the moment will happen and you're like oh my god you think about it forever but like the biggest thing that you like i like if you ever have a mistake in your rookie year the biggest thing is just like the recovery about it no one talks yeah. about that like if you ever make a mistake during a show like everyone's done it the biggest part about it though is the recovery and how you recover in the moment mm -hmm. like yeah i remember 2019 finals night finals night I jazz run and I'm the front line of this box set. And it's like, when I come in, I set the front line for all, like it basically the, the lines behind me kind of flutter in. And so I am setting the front line and like me, I'm in between two people and I'm way too close to the person on my right. When I come in and set this line and it's just like, we have this moment that we're able to like plie and kind of be able to fix it. And it's just, you fix it up. And it's just like moments, little things like that, where you just like finding ways to recover. That's all that matters. Like everyone's going to make a mistake. It's all about the recovery though, in that situation. And I think honestly, if you can recover in a cool way, that's honestly better than that's, that's even yeah, cooler than I mean, just yeah. doing it right. Honestly, it's like props to you. Um, exactly. <laughs> speaking yeah. of props, no <laughs> pun intended. That's terrible. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you guys talking about the chairs, you guys used the 2018 uh blue coats props yeah correct 2018 yeah well it was oh, yeah. it was one it was it was one chair it was right one the, chair. the big chair yeah yeah the big chair yeah we had we had the and uh that was kind of cool because like i had been a, a fan of drum court at the time and the, yeah. the concept for the show in 22 was like i thought it was the coolest thing ever it was like yeah 50th anniversary of dci we're gonna pay like all like homage to like all these like yeah tons of other shows and like from past cores mm -hmm. all these cool props and it was the concept was cool. People often talk about how the execution probably wasn't the best, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, the concept whatever, was dude. there. Yeah, the it concept is. was I, cool because it's like yeah. I, I mean, everyone else was kind of doing like a I don't know homage to themselves, like a kind of like yeah. us for the 50th anniversary. But you guys did like a almost like a history of drum corps type of show i mean you pay homage to so many different groups in the beginning with brand crocker kind of with the little voiceovers of you know calling out all it was it was super cool because i got i never got to watch it during the 2022 season so kind of getting to watch the show back now um getting ready for the episode it was super cool to like hear all of these old names and it's cool because I'll, we're as drum corps keeps growing and new audiences come in and getting to hear and you guys doing a show like that i thought this was super cool but i was curious though for you guys like and especially you what did you think about that coming in in your first year kind of being a almost like a it, you know the show's called welcome to the void but this was almost like a like welcome to the world of drum corps type of show what did you think about that coming in yeah i mean so i i i wasn't sure what the show was going to be at first mm -hmm. um they pc on their on our instagram page and facebook they would like drop like these like weird little cryptic pictures yeah and and not a lot of people knew what was going on and they're like oh there's a there's like hints in our show with these pictures and the, they were they were old props from like past like drum corps shows, and they spelled out void. Mm -hmm. And so so we weren't so not only did like a lot of people like didn't recognize the props because they looked different because hmm, voice crack, 
yeah. <laughs> you're good, bro. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Yeah. I literally stumbled all over myself in the intro. You are fine, brother. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, no, but yeah, and it spelled out void. And once we kind of yeah. heard everything, and we had that moment where everything kind of clicked, and we were like, "Oh, this is what we're this is what we're doing." Yeah, and it's a lot of shows that like I've seen, or like some shows that I've like never gotten like the chance to see, like like at all. Mm-hmm. And and even the staff at the time when we were like adding props and like doing stuff, they were kind of like giving us like hints and like there was kind of like an Easter egg for us too because like we didn't know that we were gonna have some of these props right when like spring training. We're just kind of like learning the drill. We just know there's gonna be a prop there. We don't know what the prop is, and then it's like. Oh, cool! Like this is an homage to like nineteen. This is an homage to like like um, Santa Clara Vanguard, and it was like right, like, cool. And so then I got a chance to like go and watch some of the shows and see the props, mm-hmm. and we're like, oh yeah, this is like this is sick. This is sick because it just honors yeah. so many different shows, so many different cores. I mean, I think like towards the end of the show, you guys have, I think the ballad moment where you guys do like the clap, like at towards the end of the ballad, it's like a normal drum core stock ballad, and then yeah, yeah. pitch bend homage to 2014 till <laughs> yeah. and then you know the start of the drum break you guys the brass has like the visuals like i think i bd has carried this throughout every year but i feel like it really started in like 16 or 17 they started doing like the whole like bouncing side to side kind of yeah, holding on the visual and everything yeah. everyone yeah. loves that bro oh my yeah. everyone loves that and it is cool don't get me wrong it's super sick my a good friend of mine though we went to go see uh bd this past summer uh murfreesboro when they were rehearsing and i bring a good friend of mine uh from murfreesboro and we go see the show and he is just in love with that visual like specifically <laughs> every time he sees it he's like that's the coolest thing i've ever seen in my life and then like bd builds this like beautiful like human tower kind of deal i'm like that's sick he's like no 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 no, like what's happening <laughs> he's like that visual right there that's oh, yeah, the shit it's, it's, the, it's this <laughs> it's this yeah it's crazy <laughs> oh yeah i saw, i saw it too i was like oh my god this is the this is the, this thing. Is the oh, one yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, like even I thought it was so cool because at the end of semis, we posted on our Facebook and Instagram a official list of everything that like we did that was like a reference mm-hmm. and like in our show in twenty two. Yeah, and like even like the visuals and all the props because people could see the props. Like in in the visuals too, people then notice that like oh they are kind of doing a callback to like these visuals and stuff, especially yeah. in the ballad with like the the tilt and like even the before we get into that, we're doing like the the crown thing too, where like yeah. people were like kneeling down and going on that. And I remember this was the first time we ever did the the tilt was in San Antonio, I think. We uh-huh. rehearsed it, but like at a show, we like we brought that out and we did that. And then people were posting about it, and they're like, "I can't believe they just completely ripped off 2014. They ripped off." I mean, tilt. it's word for word, bar for bar. Yeah, like, no. yeah, and then yeah, and it, it really is. And then I remember, I remember seeing that, and then I remember so one of our friends on the bus was like saw that and was like he commented he's like you won't believe what they did right before that because we did the we did the crown visual too but they didn't care about that (laughs) they just cared about the tilt and they're like oh my god they copied tilt and they're like oh my god you won't believe what they did right before that and what did you guys think in the core about when things would get added in like this and it's like callbacks to like past drum course shows would anybody like meme on it or people be like oh like damn this is really cool that we get to do this so i feel like it was it's kind of both just because oh like people are gonna some people like it's with the tilt thing especially people are like oh yeah people are gonna know this is what this is like it's like iconic stuff and we're gonna do it yeah but it's just like if we can do it justice or not mm-hmm. and so some people like we're like oh well we, we're doing it but it's just people and then people online will always like say and like us at the time we're like yeah it's we're doing it but it's not like actually like how they did it it's like it's just an homage like you didn't do it as good all this but at the time we were like okay we're gonna do this like the best that we can Mm -hmm. and like because people know what it is and like just do our show because at the end of the day it's like we're kind of the whole theme is to like show love to the activity yeah exactly 100 percent. yeah so it was just it again it was such a such a special way i think to like celebrate drum corps during like its 50th anniversary yeah and it was it was it was everything that i did was like or that the core did it was it was really very cool, cool. and like the yeah. execution but the idea like and then and yeah. like also you guys were yeah. building up what became 2023 but before we get to 2023 
it's i think you got to tell the story the story of oh, you sent yeah. in you sent in your story on the google form which by the way and you know everyone that'll be in the description of this video go fill that out of course but alberto you filled out um you filled out your google form you fill out and i see your story and i read it and i have to read the first sentence because i literally i read this first <laughs> sentence when i go look at the response and I, I i found your name immediately i was like we have to we have to have this guy on so my it says long story short my rookie year of drum corps i produced a song for an artist who one year later opened for jizza of wu-tang clan and performed our song in a sold out show it's time yeah i, I you i gotta know the story I, i'm, okay, I'm cool. sitting back i'm about to be a fanboy tell the story how did this okay, so, how did this kind of happen take us through it i know this kind of goes from reading on i mean you'll tell the people but this kind of goes into 2023 but at night hey, listen let me know no, what's yeah. the story I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, what a perfect segue into 2023 also, right? Because this, yeah. this takes place, like, of course, like, during the season, like, after the season, and, yeah. like, into, like, the next season, too. Yeah. So, yeah, this this story is very cool. I can't believe this, like, happened to me, like, that, like, I was able to be a part of something, like, so cool. Yeah. And during tour. So, um, back to, like, the, this all started because I got COVID. Okay. And I brought my laptop on tour, and I wanted to, like, make beats on tour if I got the time to. Which honestly, during tour, you really don't get that much time. No. Yeah. So I didn't, I did like, I was like kind of regretting bringing it because I was like, damn, I just have my laptop now. I didn't even use it at all. And then mm -hmm. I got, I got COVID. They had to separate uh, a ton of the performers and like members into like separate rooms to quarantine. Yeah. And so I was like, the only thing I really could do was like sleep and like eat and like just like rest and lay awake. Right. And I was like, okay, cool. But I had my laptop. So, so it's like time to lock said, in. Time, yeah i guess it was i guess it was time to lock in and so i get i get a i get a dm on instagram from mm -hmm. my artist friend uh his name is ethan but at the time he went by crazy mm -hmm. and he was like hey i want like beats i'm gonna get studio time i just like want to like work and write on some stuff and he's mm -hmm. like make it like this and this and this and i was like okay cool i sent him like i made a couple that night because i was like what else am i gonna do and so one of them he ended up really liking it I sent that over to him. He's like, this one. Mm -hmm. After that, cool. Thought nothing of it. The beat was made during tour. Fast forward 2023. He's, I get a phone call and I think we're on the bus and it's like close to lights out. And so I was like, oh, because the time zone is different. He doesn't know that like I'm like way ahead of him. He's just right. giving me a call. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, yo, Beto, look, I'm at the studio. And he's like, like he has his phone to the And speaker. you can hear it. <laughs> i can hear it and like and it's already over the phone so like it's not the best quality but i'm like oh yeah. that's like that's my, that's my song I sent you that beat. that's my song <laughs> and then he's like he's like yeah i got this artist in here i was like oh my god and like and they were playing it and then he's he sends me the because he was still recording at the time and so mm -hmm. they exported it like the first like version like like after like the like no barely any mixing and mastering right and i was like and he's like oh yeah i'm gonna drop this as soon as possible and like it's like it's gonna be like a single and i was like whoa what and so yeah. that was like my first kind of moment where it's like okay cool i made this beat and i just made beats for fun right and now it's on that that song is on spotify and it's very cool it's it was just a very cool moment and that was he releasing out, that single like around the time that you had COVID and everything and like you had sent this over or like by the time he gives you a call is this after the 2022 season oh this is this is after so okay. this was yeah, this is after 2020. So in Word. 2022, towards the end of tour, beat was made, sent that over to him. Right. And then he starts writing and recording because he's he's working on a project right now. Yeah. And I'm on more stuff on that project, which is very exciting. Hell yeah. But because of because of that one song, he's like, I want to work with you. And so Hell that yeah. was that was that was a cool thing. Yeah. So this is um and then this is like midway through tour, we're in Texas. And I think we're in Pampa, Texas, but mm -hmm. I'm on Brass Bus, Brass Bus Best Bus. I'll just say that right now. But Brass anyways, Brass Bus, Best Bus, Brass Bus Best Bus, and yes. our AC just isn't working. So classic Brass Bus, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it yeah. is the best no bus, AC. but that is a very classic thing. <laughs> no, no AC. It's just some some of the kids uh, were like, "Hey, like it's too hot," and so they're like, some of them rode on staff bus to our, our like, yeah the other housing site we were going to, and the rest of us were just in there, just like kind of hanging out, having a good time still. Yeah. like shirts off it's really hot all the windows are open we're just kind of like there, just like like toughing it out like it's really hot it's texas yeah. 
And that day that our AC broke down, we have speakers and we're just playing music on the bus, having a good time. Yeah. And my, the song came out that day and it, he just like surprise dropped it. And I was like, oh my God, like this is like, this, this is like, just sick. happened. <laughs> this just happened. And, and I was like, to my friend, I was like, hey, my, my song just dropped. Like, can you play it? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I sent him a link for it because he tried searching up the song name, but he could have like he could like it was brand it. new, so it's not gonna yeah, show up. Brand yet. new, like so I sent him the link for it, and then they're playing it, and I see people listening to it, and they're like vibing, they're like nodding their yeah. head, they're like no, like I wasn't expecting like a huge like oh, like round of applause, like oh my god, you made the beat, wow. <laughs> they but, give like, you like a standing ovation after. All it's, the song. <laughs> it's like it's like people listening to it, they're like like they're nodding their head and like yeah. I was like I'm like yo like I like I made that and like I'm proud of this and yeah. they're listening to it and like they liked it and I was like well this is like so sick yeah dude and so people like people not you like okay cool yeah that's how people found out that i was like making beats and like doing music and stuff like that mm-hmm. and that was just a that was a fun like moment of like camaraderie where it's like oh yeah like we're all in this together but also i get to share this other thing that i like with like my friends and just such a, like on a day already where like things like the brass bus like losing its ac and like you're you're in texas where it's already hot and like you're tired it's the middle of the season like everyone wants to get out of texas week it's super hot and everything yeah. and just like oh my god drum course hard and it's like little moments like that where it can just like boost you through the rest of a season like yeah, stuff I like mean, that yeah. and that was it was so cool man and after that um it was like a bit while well, and then it's, that song came out and then it started getting picked up by some like like blogs and like pages on instagram and facebook mm-hmm. and they're like hey this like like underground like hip-hop artist out of out of like my hometown is like like it's coming up a song yeah and it's like it's coming up and it's like he's doing this and he's paying for promotions so for the for the people at home um there's a page called um the food community mm-hmm. and i think that page has like a hundred and like forty thousand followers oh my god and it's just like it's just like hip-hop and like you yeah, know, like just you know, like, big like, like Latin, exactly, and exactly, and it got reposted on that on their story, and they're like, "You gotta like watch out for this song. This is like new release." Yeah, and it's like, it's the song called Champions by like Crazy, yeah. and then it's like produced by, and I'm like, it says produced by, and like that's me. Yeah, and that's so, I was like, oh my god, and then even still now, there was an official post made by a like a smaller blog. That also like highlights like hip hop artists in like the town that I'm in, yeah, and like the area, and they're like, yeah, you gotta check out this song. It's like, it's we love it. This like what's the, his name like again? The... What's the artist's name? So, I'm not. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but I so, just I'm trying no, to find yeah, it. So, so his name. I, I can send the link for it too if you want. Hundred percent like that, I like that. So um, I'll get that going. But his right now he goes by Medrano, but at the time he went by Crazy. I'm okay. currently wearing his his merch right now hell yeah can we get his merch anywhere we're trying to plug we're trying to plug oh we're trying to we can we can plug the homie we can plug the homie here yeah we can plug the homie on the pocket we'll we'll have like we can have michael kind of put some over the top just to kind of let us know where we can find like music merch anything like that we the champions at the end of the day because of today we got to celebrate the champions the chosen ones the ones that put on for the city my people with me counting 50 smoking like a chimney he had a he had a brand change so he went by crazy and now he goes by Medrano. but yeah uh the link right there is to the song Mm -hmm. all stuff um and so after we get posted by some blogs he starts doing like more he goes to open mics and he starts like networking right because of like people reaching out to him and he gets the opportunity to open for like i'm i don't even know how it happened but he's like it was like um he was just like um because he was managing himself and he still does and he's just sending tons of emails to tons of venues about like getting right. shows and like like getting him booked right and he's doing mm-hmm. his thing like 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 grinding and he's like i think he had there was an opener that like dropped and they asked him to open for like jissa yeah. and and he told me he was doing that and he told me the day and he's like we have to go and I don't think I said this in the the form, but maybe I did. But we had like we had a camp that weekend for PC, <laughs> and so I like I kind of missed out on like what could have been like a really cool moment to like have my song and like music played 
Yeah. Like in front of like a like a, it was sold out. Uh, I had I did look this up later, but the the venue was the the Garden AMP in Orange County. Yeah. California. And it houses close to like I think 800 people. And so it and so like I know there I know there's a lot and I've seen videos, but it was just a surreal moment cuz me and him went to high school together. Yeah. And then he started I started making beats and he started rapping. Mm-hmm. And so it's like wow, like it's just it's literally just these two kids opening for It's like just this cool to see it. It's like something you, you did as like a hobby and it's something you you just done for fun and then now kind of getting to see that like people appreciate the project and are going to like check out this song. Yeah, it, it it's just I think it's still surreal still. I love telling like this story and like that's why I'm kind of glad that like I was able to do it because it's still the fact that like I produced this song yeah. while I was on tour. Yeah. Just yeah, like in I COVID, thought, just like yeah, whatever, like let's make some beats. Yeah, I did it. And then now it ended up like that song and like his music that he was putting out just allowed him to like open up for like a huge icon, perform like the biggest like show he's ever done. Yeah. And like and now he's like he's doing a lot more stuff. He's like been on podcasts, has gone interviews, is still yeah. getting reposted by some blogs. And so like he's he's doing his best and he's like he's coming up in like right. at least like our local like underground hip hop scene in like the little town that I'm from. Mm-hmm. So and it's it's such a cool it's such a cool feeling, honestly, that I get to be a part of that moment. Yeah, that's super dope. And it's just like, oh my God, to have that happen. How old were you when that kind of like when that song came out and that all kind of popped off. Okay, so yeah, so I I produced the song when I was like nineteen. Uh huh. Because my birthday is in the summer, so I was like freshly nineteen. Yeah. And then, well, now like, like when I was like, this all happened like recently. So like, within the span of a year, like I'm twenty. So that happened in, like when I was nineteen. I produced a song. Yeah. The song drops, and he does the shows, and I like, and like a year later. Hmm. And it's such a, it was very cool, like process and for, like for me to understand as well. Cause like as a producer, when like you make music, like you'll have stuff and then like music will, so like people say like, it'll sit in the vault or like, yeah. it'll sit for a long time before like something ever like gets done with it. Right. And then when it does come out, it's like, it could be like your biggest song and like, you never know. Right. Like you just got to give it time. And, and you so never know when it's going to come happened. out either. So the fact that it was able to come yeah. out, like I've sat on songs for like a couple of years. Like I also, you know, will make music for fun on the side, but like I've had, you know, I've been able to produce for a couple artists myself. And like, I remember like there was one song that was completely done and it was sat on for like two years before it came out. And when it came yes. out, it was like the lead single for the guy's EP. But like we sat on that for two years and like, he's like, Oh, it's going to be a single. It's going to come out. And I'm like, Oh, sick. And then like it took two years and it was like a surprise release. And I was like, Oh, Here's the song. <laughs> yeah, like, here it it's is. Like, man. Yeah, because like that stuff like that happens, you know. Mm-hmm. And I kind of it gave me a good insight of like going into the process. Where it's like, okay, cool. A year later, now he's doing something with the song. Yeah. And the there's a there's a featuring artist on him, Woer. He's an incredible like MC as well. Like he like, yeah. he raps like insane. And he's also someone that I got introduced to by him. Yeah. By my friend, who's like like a part of like the the underground like hip hop scene in like my little like town, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like just getting in that like locally is yeah. like still cool, you know? It's like early it's on too. Mainstream. Yeah, it's not like it's not like you're mainstream. It's not like everybody knows your name, but like people in your town know who you are. People yeah. in your town know you made this song and like this artist that like you produce for. Yeah. Like that's that's still that cool. That feels you know? really cool. Regardless, yeah, it, so, like people yeah. in your area like like your stuff and like they mm-hmm. know you and they're like, oh, you did this. Like that's super cool because it's just like I just I had just I just did this for fun and like just pass it to my friend and yeah, then he I mean, just honestly, made the song yeah, and it's like and he, and glad you guys like it. You no, know, yeah. I mean like he really made it what it is. Like I'm being honest, man. Like yeah. like <laughs> like I just like laid a couple like drum sounds. Did a little piano, looped it, and he just he made it what it is, you know. But like, I'm glad I was like able to be a part of like, like his moment. Yeah, you know, like it's it, it's very it's cool. sick. Very cool. It's very sick. You need to, yeah. We'll have the link. We need the link for like the song at the top. Everyone, go check that out. Um, you'll yeah. set, like just send that over afterwards. We'll have that up top because like we just I need to I need to listen to it because that's just dope. No, that, yeah, like you got you, to be a part you. of that. Yeah. But also, yeah, we got to plug that for sure. Got to plug the homies' music. Right? We're the champions. 
Um, like but that. getting to yeah. 2023, um, really like the breakout year for PC, just like becoming what it is now because 2023 was such an incredible year for the core in the show and the scores and everything in between just kind of what like reading into the season kind of what you guys got to do um the staff that's there with pc like the guys that you have teaching you over there are just incredible so much good things happening for pc but in 2023 it just seemed like it was such an incredible season and really true like the the statement year for PC letting drum core kind of know that it's like, we're more than just your everyday run of the mill, like semifinalist core. Like we, we have a good product here. We have a great show. We have great, like really talented members and we're, we're here to compete. We're here to put a great show on the field. Um, for you coming back to PC and maybe you can even answer this for this season, but what kind of brought you back to PC? Was it like the culture? Like what for you brought you back to this drum core? Yeah, so um, I'll go into that. So after 22, I wasn't sure if I was going to come back in March 23. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really wanted to, but I was at the time, I would, the only reason I was able to March 22 was because I worked the summer prior and had a job. Right. And so I paid that. I paid my whole season in full basically from that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, cool. I, I'm also paying for school at the time. And like, like I have other expenses and I was like, how am I like, how am I going to like March if I don't have the money? Right. And so I remember it was, this was during January camp and I had some friends and like, like past members reach out to me, even staff were like, Hey, what are your plans like for the 23 season? Do you know if you're going to come back? Right. And I just didn't think I'd get like an overwhelming amount of like love and like messages from like friends are like, Hey, we missed you. Like, Hey, are you going to come back? Like, and so this was three days before January camp. Yeah. I, I was like looking back and I think on, I was like scrolling through YouTube and I saw on YouTube, like video of like my past year show. And then yeah. I heard a recording of like our core song and I just started crying. I was like, Oh man, yeah. I'm going to let me, let me show up to this audition. <laughs> I'll like, be there. <laughs> let me, let me show up to this audition. Like I'll, I'll be there. Yeah. And the, the audition material didn't change from what it was in 22. So I, it's like stuff that I had prepared for when I auditioned yeah. in 22. And so I just had to, like like scramble i was my brother was in high school so i was like hey it's like sneak a mellophone for me i'm gonna go audition for pc again mm -hmm. and so like with the very limited time i had i was like cool let me go audition and i kind of like decided for myself i was like okay, cool i'm gonna go to this camp if i get a contract it was like meant to be i'm gonna march i'm gonna figure out any way possible to like make it work and if i don't get contracted then it wasn't meant to be right. and i come back i get contracted and i was like like okay cool and then I didn't, I, I never regretted it. Like that was the best, best, like on the whim decision I've ever made coming back. Hell and yeah. it really is like to answer your question, like it really is the culture. Hell like, yeah. Like so many vets coming back and like seeing the, the culture improve and mm -hmm. like, and I've heard like some kind of like horror stories of like how drum corps used to be and like all this and like even from like back in the day, but like, right. Just like knowing that like, that's not how we are Yeah. now. And it's like, cool. And now I'm going to be coming back and I'm going to be a vet. Mm -hmm. So I, I had, I can be like, like a role model for like people coming into like drum corps and like considering and staying at PC Yeah. for like the longest time. People have always like seen PC as like a stepping stone core or like, again, like the, like, just like we're average one of the middle, like semifinalists, like all this is like what we right. are. Right. It's just some core that like, you know, it's like a pop, like yeah. they'll always say like a popcorn drum core. And like, you'll hear that and people are like, what? And it's like, when, I, when this drum core comes on, we can go get popcorn or something, you know? Well, yeah. And so like now after the season that we had, I feel people, they're not, gonna, they're not like, saying that this year. They're not, they're not saying that anymore. No. And like, even with like people showing up to like auditions, I've never seen like more of a turnout. Yeah. Coming from like me in 22, we we had eight mellophones starting. Right. And 24 in like for auditioning, I think we had like 24 mellophones show up like the first audition. Camp. Like for th this like this upcoming season, like in this camp season, you've had like that's that's how many came to like the first camp. The first camp, 24 mellophones came to audition. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's massive. 
yeah and so it was like a i was like wow before it was like we barely like had people like wanting to show up yeah right. now we have so many people interested in like what we're doing and want to be a part yeah. of it and that made like that made me very happy because i'm very proud to like you know march this corner be a part of what was built now yeah. and now you've been a, you've been a part of the process to kind of put this put this group like not just on the map but it's just like hey we're we're a destination spot like we're not just some like stepping so like we have great culture but not like we're having these great shows with like really talented members mm -hmm. i mean 22 and 23 for you guys like night and day with the shows the stuff that you guys were like trying to like the the content that you guys were trying to achieve and the level that you achieved it at like yeah. night and day 23 was like dude incredible like how you were talking about vets coming back how many like how many vets would you say like just ballparking like in the horn line kind of came back for uh 23 in the horn line well i never man i want to say like i want to say like half of the, like horn half line the horn line. i want to say half the horn line was vets i yeah. want to say and i'm guessing like you guys probably also with like the season that you had in 22 with the show like probably also brings in some like drum corps people too like some not just like brand new drum corps people but also just like drum corps vets like people who are maybe new to PC. no yeah like yeah i mean like not like just like <coughs> first year pc members but like like past like members of like other cores like yeah like people who have done like like open class like a lot of our a drumline actually i think they all march gold together mm -hmm. and so and it's like stuff like that and i definitely did meet some people um that have like marched other cores and one of someone who marched mellophone actually a great friend of mine um they had marched vanguard and you know mm -hmm. with the whole like like unfortunately they had to like you know like postpone and like fold yeah. that for that season and mm -hmm. them able to like find a home and come back to pc yeah because they had March PC and then they did Vanguard after they couldn't come back. They came back and found their home again here. Yeah. We're able to like have and, a home. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's like people from like all, all walks of life doing the activity. So Absolutely. Yeah. For 2023, kind of hopping back in. First off, I got to see a really funny video from 2023 that I got to credit the YouTube account. It's literally the name of it is just Sebastian. I don't know if you know who yes, he is, bro. Yes, dude, yes. he makes like the he made the best recap video for 2023. Oh like God. you guys have one for your main page yeah. on uh, Pacific Crest's YouTube, which is great. Like super emotional, mm -hmm. like recap video of the season. Like watch that those are always beautiful but his like members need to be doing stuff like that but it's just hilarious no, yeah, like okay. we need that in the community because it's just his video was like it was like basically just a bunch of memes and you guys just funny moments from 2023 yeah, no. and it's like behind the scenes videos and it's like that's i just wanted to put that there's like that is just one of the i i just love like that. that video it's so funny and it's just oh, we yeah. need more of it I will say people who are like listening and watching, please check that video out. Yeah. He put a lot of work into that. Some of my videos, I sent him videos Yeah, that like no are way. in there and there's videos of me. Yeah. Cause it was like after the season, he was like, I'm going to do this thing. And everyone was like super on board with it. Right. And then it, he inspired a lot of people to like on their own, make their own videos and then post them on their own accounts. But he just kind of did it on YouTube. Yeah. And then he, he did a multicam of like rehearsals. Yes. And, like, people's different go -kart runs. Yeah. And it's like that type of stuff that I like get, I feel like we'll get people excited because it gets the members excited. Right. Like, I hope it gets like, like the people excited, like the fans excited. And I was, he is marching again with us in the 24 season. Nice. And he's, he's already planning stuff out and he's reaching out to like people, like he's reached out to me wow. and other people being like, Hey, I'm going to do this again, but I want it to be better than last year. So yeah. if you like that, then like what, look out for this year's video dude hell yeah and like that we need more of that kind of media content because i mean no, i know the cores will do it and i know you guys got the media team and everything actually we had a media person on like a couple episodes ago so i know they do great work in being able to like promote you guys and market and all that good stuff but like man there's just nothing like a classic just like behind the scenes like drum corps kids being drum corps kids and there were so yeah. many funny videos in there that i'm just like this is what it's about right here like this video if you could sum up what drum corps is 
it's this video right here like it's just the perfect like yeah. just drum corps kids being drum corps kids dude like like people like slicing up pb and j's bro like it's just the most right like the i like so yeah. many videos of the brass bus ac just like broken down and people just go yeah exactly that, bro, that that day that day yeah <laughs> exactly the day i was talking about yeah yeah. No, I, I I remember all those videos, all that stuff that happened. It's it's so fun. Like as like a past member who had marched out, it was very cool. And it's fun to and look I back know, on. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think um I think one of my high school kids that I um at the high school I took at, I think he found that video and like some other videos. And so they were kind of looking at it and they're like, hey, I saw you. And I was like, Yeah, that was that was in there. That was me. That was, that was there. me. <laughs> But for 2023, as you guys get into the season with this really cool show, you guys make a statement at San Antonio. And it was where DCI makes the video and covers you guys because you guys are just on a roll. And you show up to San Antonio, first time, all the cores are together to start regional season. And you guys place 12 out of the gate. And talking to yeah. Julia Robles, she said that was like a super special night for the core. So from like your perspective, what was that like for you and kind of the people around you? What was that like for you guys? Like as a core, again, we've talked about where a lot of people undervalue, like underlook PC for what they do. And you guys have incredible shows and you guys just took this big leap in 2023 with the show. What was that like for you guys when you get the scores? And I mean, scores are not everything, of course. It, it Like it's at the end of the day, you do drum core for each other. But when the work and you get to see your work pay off and you get credited for what you're doing, what was that like for you guys? Man, San Antonio, man, that it was. We knew we had something. Yeah. Like that was great from like, I want to say like the first show we ever did because we got we got scored and we were like last compared to like all the other groups that were performed in. But I remember like a tons of like vets and people were like i think we scored like a 64 which is like for like show starting off it's like okay cool that's where they're gonna be but yeah i don't think like i remember in 22 I'm like we never scored that high until like we got out of like socal yeah and, and so and it was like okay cool and then more and more shows come by and the gap between some of like our competitors is getting kind of smaller and smaller mm-hmm and at some point we're gonna notice that also and we just it was kind of a whole moment where we kind of realized we're like hey like we did pc because we love like coming back we love the culture like everything about it like we've never been like a super competitive like group let's just go have fun and do the thing right yeah and then we're doing that and we're also getting better each time and we're getting the credit for what we're doing yeah it's 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 insane and mm-hmm. like leading up to it like san antonio i remember we had like a kind of little speech from like some staff and like our brass caption had also were like hey we have a we have a very like unique opportunity to like do something that like has never happened in like entire history of this drum corps yeah and it was like it was like not to add like any stress or like pressure for you guys to like do and overachieve do what you guys know how to do do what you've been like rehearsing like every single day like leading up to this yeah and we took the field had an amazing run and it like we we it happened like we broke into like the top 12 yeah like and like on san antonio like we're like the first regional where like people really say like it really matters you know yeah because you're all together that day like that's the first time everyone's together and that's truly we talked about this last episode a little bit and i like how i like how we kind of broke it up but it truly is like part one and part two of tour like part one of tour is getting on the road socal west coast tour kind of making your way through the pacific northwest coming down through the midwest going to texas and when you make it to texas and san antonio the day of that regional that starts a whole different part of the season to get through to the end of the season yeah yeah i mean because after san antonio scores uh gets scored and we do the show that kind of determines how like some lineups go for like some other like shows in the future yeah and our staff was like okay cool now we're, we have the score that we got. And so it kind of presented us with like the cool opportunity to like perform shows like like bef- like like before our competitors, the people we're trying to like catch up to. Right. And so it was very cool because like now I'm like playing shows with like 
cores like on the same like time that like these other cores that i never ever got to like perform with mm-hmm. or, like do stuff with because like in 22 it was like we would go on like first like all the time right or like be one of the first ones to go on yeah and still in the daytime I'd, yeah and like i i remember like sometimes if like we packed up fast enough i could catch like the endings of like some shows or like right. some cores that are still performing but like we really didn't have that and so it was like very cool also because since we're performing later in the day we had more time before shows to rehearse and Mm -hmm. that once the staff like told us that we all kind of knew we're like okay cool we we're taking advantage of this and we're not gonna like let this like time that we're given like Like the scores aren't everything but you guys have a really great opportunity to keep getting better at this show as we keep getting better and getting those later time slots to perform you get more time to perfect your craft and really start to own this show rather than just performing it you know no yeah and those like those days for like when rehearsing for shows it they were great it was yeah. show days are always the best and like rehearsal like rehearsals during show days they would like feel shorter but like even though we had more time it still felt like we were getting it's, all the stuff yeah. done and like even like during sometimes it still feel like it still feels like it wouldn't be enough. Like I still would be like, I want more. And then we just show up to the lot, like do our thing, do the show. And then that it is, it just is what it is. Especially in the beginning. Like if you ever hit any like back to back shows, like those days, just like they go super fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's to the point now where we're just like on the move all the time now, basically. So it's just, it's just like, how are you going to like make use of like the time that you do have now? Yep like that no but yeah and like going back to to the night of san antonio i remember when we found out when we got like we broke into like top 12 mm-hmm. it was after san antonio we do laundry so like a lot of i know people like to go and like do stuff but we, we just we just didn't get that yeah uh we did laundry and i i was with um people with like well, in terms of like my brass friends on brass bus mm-hmm. and everyone's like has like scores are getting announced and like everyone's like on one phone one person's phone being like shh Clark, we gotta we gotta we gotta hear what we got we gotta hear what we got and and it was just kind of a i think we were also in like some like ice cream parlor so like everybody who was in there was like why are all these kids in here? <laughs> <laughs> and then we're just you know, it was it was it was very cool and then you find out really- and you guys are just screaming they're like what the hell are they just like screaming about <laughs> they're like that yeah but like no it was what what a special what a special what night. a special moment was, for you guys as a group yeah. Man, that is mm-hmm. super cool I, i'm curious about the 2023 season and, I, and then i kind of want to talk about some like just fun performance questions from you but for 2023 it, what made this season so different and special for pc compared to any other year it felt like this was such a like it felt like such a statement year but it also felt like kind of reading in and watching that recap video and seeing these behind the scenes, it felt like the group itself, what made it special was how close the people were to each other in that culture. Like what, what would you say as someone who, you know, on the inside made that 2023 season so special? I have like the vet culture coming back. I'm not going to say it's all culture, but it's my favorite part yeah. of like, like PC in general. Mm-hmm. The vet culture coming back was, I feel like, did play a kind of role into why everyone got really close. Yeah. Because everyone, like, people who auditioned and they came back and you were there, you are a PC now. We are a family. Yeah. Like, that's, it is what it is. The vets that come back, that came back from 22, because most of the vets came back from, like, 22, where we weren't doing as well competitively. But that culture and, was so good. It was like, yeah, I will come back yeah. and keep building this thing. Yeah, and then like it was very cool because we were like all the vets that marched that year were like, okay, cool, we're in a better spot now. Let's kind of like we know what we kind of have to do to like kind of help us like get like better. Yeah. And we were just kind of just talking and like having that like work ethic and like mindset kind of rubbing off on like like our first year members. And like it was it was very cool to see because they were like doing it and they wanted to do good for like the vets and like for like the fans and like like, right. you know, and just for themselves which is like the most important part mm-hmm. you want to like get better and like be better than like the day before you know mm-hmm. like that's all it's like that's all the activity is 
it's like because people people care about scores we don't like to or at least me personally i don't like to look at scores when i do the activity but if i can do better than i did my last performance or my last rehearsal yeah. then like i'm making progress and that's what's going to carry us to like where we're going to go in like right. the season yeah but we just got very close as a horn line and just like members like like off rip like yeah you guys were just was, close was, and connected it was such a it's it was a it was just a great energy like i feel like the the shift was just because we had a a lot of like familiar faces people just got like like we're happy to see a lot of like the same people yeah and then we just kind of carried that on and just like getting to know all the other people and making sure they felt welcomed and like invited because if because, the vets are on the same page that makes it so much easier for everyone to get oh, along. a hundred a hundred percent and like I know why I came back was because I made a lot of friends and I had a fun time. I want to give that for them as well, you know? Yeah. Just like that's what and so it was everyone, everybody's sections, they were kind of close, you know, like there are moments because you are kind of like you see each other all the time. There's like little like gribes and like stuff happens, you know, but at the end of the day, we all love each other. Right. And us kind of seeing where we like we're doing like competitive wise, people get excited also. I feel like yeah. I'm not gonna like knock that off because some people do get excited about that, and you know it's like it is exciting to see like it, it's exciting yeah. to see the work pay off because like not only you guys doing the you're doing the part of why it matters and why everyone why we all do it and why we love this activities because of that closeness that camaraderie like the the connection that you make every single season with a horn line with a group of people, but when you get close and you have these memories and you create them and then you get to go on the road and take this product that you've been working on together and you start to really own it and enjoy it and you start to like see the credit come back and you know how hard you guys have worked for it and everything that you've been through on you for that group in that year i think that's what always makes it so cool to see the scores because it's like you're getting that credit it's like what you guys are doing is getting the credit and you guys are doing something really cool and it's like regardless i think also that's not to say that like lower placing groups aren't doing anything cool either it's just it's a nice oh, added yeah, bonus, sure, yeah. you know it's it's a great and it's a great feeling especially because i didn't really have that like at pc and that's not the reason why i went to back to pc also right. it's just kind of like a oh we're, we are doing good now we yeah. do have a the culture that's already members. there it's like not only do i like this place but we got we're gonna have some people come in here yeah it's and it, it's crazy and i feel like in the way things are looking now it's gonna look like that for like this next season yeah because like there are tons of vets and there are tons of really cool talented people like you know I feel like it is still too early to say, but you know, like who knows, man? Like I'm just, I'm just excited. I love, I love talking about like PC and like drum core. It's like, yes, yeah. I love it, dude. I'm really excited for what you guys got cooking this next year. But right now I kind of want to talk about some like fun little, I did this, like some fun performer questions in my last episode. And I kind of want to ask them in this one as well, but for you, just some fun performance questions here, but for you, you know, a, a crucial part to a summer of drum court is the Walmarts, the Walmart buy stops. Yeah. If you can ever get a buy stop at a gas station, whatever. And an important part of the process, since this is a podcast called Meet the Bus, when you're on the bus, a, a crucial part to a summer into having a good summer is having your bus box. And something mm -hmm. that I've never really dove into on this podcast, and I'm curious to ask from you. What's what are some essentials that need to be in your bus box? All right, okay. So essentials, I'll I'll do bus box, but I also had um like other stuff that didn't fit in my bus box. Mm -hmm. So for me, my bus box was a shoe box. Nice, because like, everyone's and, got. By the way, yeah. if anyone at home doesn't know what I'm talking about, like a bus box will basically be everyone will do something different. For example, like a shoe box, and like for me, I did like a you know, I think I did like a big clear like plastic container because I was bougie about it. I wanted everything, dude. I wanted, I wanted the hookup by my fourth year. I had the peanut butter jar, the Nutella jar, the Oreos. Like bro, yeah, I had the like whole that. thing with the Gatorade it's like that, too. Yeah, yeah. So like, it, I get, I get crazy as I keep. Going going out throughout the season but like yeah basically that's kind of what the bus box is but yeah you can yeah yeah you're no. essential so yeah so my rookie year i kind of did have like the big clear box and the reason i kind of 
downgraded to a shoe box is because I like filled that thing to the brim yeah. and like I didn't even finish it like by the end of tour. So I ended up having to throw away like a ton of snacks and I was like, I felt really bad about it. And so I was like, okay, cool. My next year, I don't need all these snacks. I don't need all this stuff. And so I just got the shoe box and that was the snack stuff. And then uh, me and my uh, my bus partner, that's my trumpet friend that I was talking about earlier, yeah. we had shower caddies that were like had suction cups and we put them on the side of our, like the windows of the bus Ooh. And that's where we had stuff like, yeah, it was like, it was very really cool. Like, um, maybe you can put a picture of it, but it's just like, if you look up shower caddy, there's yeah. instruction cups that you can just like put on the glass and, you guys and just remove put that them. on the window. Yeah. We put that on the window. I hung my credentials on there. I hung my core necklace on there. I had like makeup remover and like, I had like tons of other like essential stuff, but my wallet was that's there, so phone smart. charger, portable charger. Oh yeah. This is free game for y'all. Like first year members, yes. like any free vets game is never happening this. right now. Free game. Cause and make sure that it's the ones that have the suction cups because you can remove them safely and you we don't want the ones that have like adhesive or that have like a hook that you have to put to on. Ruin the it window. has to be the suction cup ones, yeah, because you ruined the window, yeah. Yeah. And so you can like you'll hang your credentials, wallet, anything that you can like have there, leave it there. Yeah. And then the the shoe box was just the goodies, it was just the snacks, all the goods. And so I found I love Pringles. Yes. And yeah, dude. <laughs> I yeah. love Pringles and. I loved, and I kind of was like, like rookie, like rookie year, freshman year. Me in high school was like watching the beat inside BD three sixties, and they in twenty seventeen they were like, oh my god, I love the pizza Pringles, and I was like, yo, I love those too. I can't believe the Blue Devils like <laughs> pizza Pringles too, and uh, <laughs> like I'm gonna and, get uh, the yeah, pizza and, Pringles, bro. I am gonna be a Blue Devil. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's like it's like stuff like that. Like people get excited about that, yeah. but I like Pringles, and they were like the perfect size to fit. In the shoe box yeah so i had like a rotation of like three flavors mm-hmm. like at all times on me and one was like the classic one was like the pizza yeah and then one was like whatever i i could find mm-hmm. like else and there was like these like cool like chili lime ones that i really like also Ooh. and there was yeah and it was just for convenience sake because it was like a compact little tube of chips that was a lot and they fit in the shoe box really well and i can yeah. say them on the bottom and then I keep stuff like I love like beef jerky. So what like when I went to Bucky's, I bought like the bags of beef True. jerky, and they and then I would also buy Slim Jims because y'all got most, a Bucky stop on tour. We got a Bucky stop on tour. Oh my god, dude, that's like an elite. I feel like I only maybe had one Bucky stop in my life, like actually on tour. But like that is like the elite buy stop right there. That that is the that is the that's like better than any Walmart random gas station. That's the like best buy stop. That's the best buy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I would always, I stocked up on some like stuff from like Bucky's and like beef jerky. So like any Slim Jims, I love Slim Jim. Mm-hmm. Any like, like stick beef jerky or just like whatever I could find. And then it had to be some type of like gummy candy or like cookie. Yes. And like my go-to cookies, which like they're severely underrated, but everyone loves them is the frosted animal cracker cookies. The, like the grandma's like, you know what I'm talking about? The pink and white. I think I know white. what you're talking about. So you could you, you might can be onto something. Too. You might be onto because, something here because those are the best cookies. I'm saying it right now. It's they been did a not minute. get frosted enough. animal cookies. Frosted animal cracker cookies. They're pink and white, and they have like and they're yeah. I know they're what like, you're talking about. Yeah, fire. They're great. Yeah, and like, very underrated. They are very underrated. I would, you buy a big bag from Walmart. There's tons of like mini bags as well that yeah. you can get. And it was that, and then I liked Rice Krispies, so uh-huh. I also had Rice Krispies, and then I was able to find these, um, like, marshmallow treat, like, Fruity Pebbles bars also that were like Rice Ooh. Krispies, but with Fruity Pebbles. And that was actually really cool because I had friends that, like, um, they had, like, they had a gluten intolerance, like, they couldn't, like, they were allergic to, like, to gluten, like, they couldn't have it. Yeah. And those are gluten free, mm-hmm. and so like you, you always got to look out for, like, the friends too, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, not only do I love Fruity Pebbles, like, they could have those snacks and so yeah exactly that was and then um like for gum, i always had like sour patch or like the sour patch watermelon like gummy stuff Gotta or, like, have some the candies Bull, on you. or like the the gummy bears i like gummy candy like if i'm gonna do candy like mm-hmm. i like chocolate but like for a bus box chocolate doesn't really work yeah and like the people who are march like you know why just, it's kind the of bus melt. box just <laughs> it's gonna melt it's, it's just yeah melt. it's just not yeah. it's just not it man and then actually I'm going to put this on little game as well. When, um, if, if it's like first, like see if it's allowed, but like when learning, uh, learning drill, 
I bought high chews and little like butterscotch candies. Oh. And so like while you're learning drill, you can like give them out. To, like, I would do Jolly different. Ranchers. That was my thing learning drill. Yeah, like, right. Jolly yeah, Ranchers so that's what I do. are like so, little candies. Yeah, so I I love the I love the Werther's originals. Those those go crazy. So and so crazy. I had high chews or those all the time in my fanny pack. Yeah. And so those just is like a little cool little like snack if I kind of wanted it. Pro tip like, right there, by the way. I don't think anyone's ever talked about that. If you're learn like when you're learning drill, like keep some keep some candy because you're not gonna be playing like you're learning drill. Yeah, you're not. Just put a couple Jolly Ranchers, some. Don't go crazy, but just you know have a couple, maybe pass them around. If you're a rookie, mm-hmm. dude, keep a couple Jolly Ranchers. Be like, pull some money from. Hey, does anybody want some Jolly Ranchers, bro? You will be the you will save the morning. Mm-hmm. You will save the day yeah, for those yeah. people out there. Yeah, because sometimes like people have a bad day, they wake up. It's like it's especially during spring training because it's like people like they're getting used to like all the long hours and yeah. it's hot. And it's like sometimes like hey, you will meet, you will make a friend because you give them like a little candy. Yeah. Like I will say though, because like I don't know if all clothes are all this, but I know like that's been a thing that like from like some people I've talked to, yeah. and I love doing it. But just like also just pick up your trash. Do not. That's like, real too. Do not just like <laughs> yeah, you gotta pick up the trash. That's, right. that's that's the only thing. You gotta pick Definitely up the trash. Just put it back in your pocket, your fanny pack. I like that. I like that. If like people like if you give like your candy to someone and like they litter, don't give them candy no more. You right. know, they gotta pick up the trash. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, another question for you here. I've been asking this the last two episodes, and I really like this one. What is your favorite show that you've gotten to perform at that's not finals? That's not finals. That's not finals. Ooh, wow. We all love okay. Lucas Oil. It's the spot to be like there. Um, when you step into that stadium, there's nothing like it. But other places, like what is your like other favorite show besides finals? Wow. Um I'm trying to think, man. There was the I wanna say last year we did drums along the Rockies, and yeah. I didn't do that show. And that was that was a cool show. I Colorado State, I think it was at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colorado State. That was that was interesting. I I just I just say that because I also got the um, there was patches also for drama. Yeah, the, yeah. And so I got patches. Um, funny story for that too. Um, I'm gonna be like a third year vet at PC, but I still don't have a core jacket. It is like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> that's what. Yeah. So what? Yeah, how did that so, happen? How do you not have so, one? And so I'm remembering this right now because I wanted to I want to talk about this. So it's like it's the it's what attra- it's a it's what's keeping me coming back to PC because it's like oh I need the <laughs> cool jacket, my man. jacket. <laughs> I need the jacket, man. In my, my rookie year, I just couldn't afford it, and I just didn't know when I'd wear it outside yeah. of like drum corps because I also wasn't sure if I was going to come back. So in 23, when I was marching, I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna buy a core jacket, and then and like completely missed the day to like order it and so i was like oh no way i don't i'm not gonna have one. Oh no and so i was like i was like this year this is the year i have yeah. all the patches i just will have the jacket you need year. the jacket I need dude the jacket, all the pc yeah. people that are listening we need to get alberto a jacket we we need you, this man please, to remind, me, remind me remind this man me. a jacket yeah like <laughs> remind, well don't get it for me but remind me so i can oh, yeah. it <laughs> make sure he gets it before the deadline yeah, I, I, yeah, and so it's either uh, so I'd say drums along the Rockies, or I think we did the it's the the in Wyoming the Casper Wyoming I think it's Casper like mm-hmm. the Troopers home show that was um that was a cool show that was also my first time doing that show in 2023 yeah and I remember I heard stories from vets where it's like this is like the crowd is like notorious because they're only there for the Troopers and like they like don't like any other like new like new age we like drum need course that or... show that show i know like now they're kind of changing some locations of shows mainly regionals right now because they're on all the big stadiums that can't be a show that you get rid of you can never get rid of the cast for wyoming show <laughs> yeah. i i've talked about it on this podcast it, if you aren't marching the troopers at that show it could be one of the most annoying shows depending on how you look at it but for yeah. me i think it's what it's like it's the it's the meat of what drum corps is. It's like that in itself, like that, that fandom, that classic drum corps fandom where it's like, we're rooting for the hometown core. And when they come on and the lights are down and it's like, it's the home show. Like that is what's so cool about tour is when you go to all these other people's like home, other cores, like home shows, you know, going to see like Nightbeat, for example, for crown or, you know, um, 
you know, obviously you could, you could keep going around and see, you know, for different home shows, you get to see like for blue nights. I mean, when you get to do drums along the Rockies, I mean, I've been, I've been able to watch that from the side of not being a part of BK and seeing how they get to do everything. And then I've also been in it to kind of see how it all happens. And, um, yeah, I just, wait, what was I even talking about right there? I forgot what Back I was just talking you. about. <laughs> <laughs> I started talking about everything. I was like, wait, yeah. what was I no, talking about? Yeah. Actually? <laughs> Cause, um, yeah, I think we're talking about the the Casper show in Wyoming because I so remember true. Never get I rid remember, of that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was such an iconic show, and I'm such a good host. Um, the, yeah, yeah, and I the crowd loved us, which is very cool. And yeah. the, so I want to say those are like number three, number two, because I do have a number one. Yeah. My number one, honestly, was is the Rose Bowl because that is home show. Yes, that is home show. Like like people will say, it, I want to cool give place. like. I need to give honorable mentions to to other like great like venues that I performed at, but yeah. and especially in 2023, that I I had I didn't fall so already better than my Rose Bowl show in my rookie year, and performing like my favorite show out of the two already, and just I had so many more friends and like family come see right. and just the love and support, and we've also had I think that year was the was one of the more like packed years. Of like that we've seen in the Rose Bowl, I think almost ten thousand yeah. people showed up. Wow, something like that. I think I forget the number, but I yeah. I, I know it wasn't ten thousand, but I think it was somewhere close to that. It was well, a like lot of people. Still it's packed a huge, in. huge packed show, and that show, um, I left the field crying because they were announcing shows after we played Ave Maria, and that song just moves me to tears. Playing our core yeah. song, it 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 moves me to tears. But we were we we're walking off the field. They're announcing scores, and I think. We tied with the the academy that night. Yeah, and that was kind of the moment that I realized I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, we had like this is like my you're first doing something like, cool. Spark. We're doing something cool. Like last year, I don't think we touched the academy like school like at all. Like I don't like it's I really like don't remember. Some specials happening here to come out the gate the way yeah. we're performing. Yeah, and so that was just that was just an insane night. So insane. that for sure is that's not finals. Is definitely that. That is sweet, dude. What has been your favorite free day so far out of uh, your two years? My favorite free day out of my two years. Hmm. Oh, let me see. There's I had I got to experience an Atlanta free day, uh-huh. uh huh, in twenty three, and that free day was cool because it's like there wasn't there wasn't much to do, but it was just the fact that I was just like hanging out with like friends, yeah, and like. It was it was just like the most like lax free day ever because in San Antonio, San Antonio is a big one, mm-hmm. but I kind of did everything I wanted to do in San Antonio my yeah. rookie year, and so it was kind of just me walking around with like some of my other like first year friends and just other people and like they got to do the stuff and like I it was cool because they're happy. Once and, like, you oh do gosh, it already like one time though, you kind of get the gist of it in your first yeah, so, year or two. So since it was since it was like a new experience for me being in like a new like like city and like yeah. doing all that cool stuff, it was like okay cool. The one thing I wish I had done though was gone to the aquarium in Atlanta. Ooh. And I did yeah, it's like it's a huge aquarium, apparently. Mm-hmm. Like one of like and I just I didn't get the chance to to go. And it was it was unfortunate because I, I love aquariums. I really do. I have an annual pass to an aquarium of the Pacific in like Long Beach, California. Yeah. So I, yeah, so I I love them, but I just didn't get a chance to do it when I was in Atlanta. That would have been really sweet, though. I'm but a yeah, big fan of it so, too. Yeah, so I, I'll probably say that just because of the first time experience of just being in a new city and like kind of just getting to see stuff. something new. Yeah, yeah. I, I always think that's yeah, the stuff. The stuff I think was cool. I bought matching fitted hats with Hell like yeah. some friends, and like we bought like a we bought like bracelets together, and we basically just had food, and like we played like this like on this like a uh, chessboard. Um, that was just like in public it was like really big chest and you had to like pick up the pieces and like move them around and do all that stuff so that was very yeah it was just like stuff like that you know it's not like i did anything crazy like oh my god i did like this cool thing i saw this yeah. it was just like fun time with friends but just in a different place that i, yeah, got, I to just got to see something new yeah. be with the people out. yeah dude 100 percent. last couple of questions but one i want to ask to kind of like round out or just kind of to get you to get to know you more what are your top three, like top three favorite drum corps shows of all time? Top three favorite drum corps shows of all time. If you can make a top okay. three. If I can make a top three. So that's okay. So I will, so top three, I will say 
um i see tons of like memes about this on like on reddit and like forums there's like mm-hmm. kind of like two like kind of like types of drum core fans and i feel like i kind of lean towards one in particular where it's like oh my god metamorph 2017 blue doubles like because yeah, yes. <laughs> like that's because that because that's when i got into drum yep. core. like i wasn't like seeing all these old shows like yeah and, like my band director at the time and friends were only showing me the shows of that of that time you know yeah which were those shows so that, those kind of shows like made me excited to do drum core right and like i've gone like back and seen like a bunch of like really cool like other shows and that are like more like traditional to like older like type stuff and they're really cool also but but that was one not... of the first shows you got to see yeah exactly so um and so this is again this is just subject this is not like objective this is my opinion yeah. subjective if i had to if i had to do it mm-hmm. and it probably changed over time and there's so number three i'm gonna just say pc 2023 goddess because my oh, favorite yeah. show of march and it was just i just love the show also mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm a fan of the show um i actually um i got i got the stomach virus on tour in 23 Oops. and so i had to sit out one of the shows but i was able to go watch in the stands and so watching my show in the stands that's a cool moment that's a cool moment and that i was like the loudest person in the stadium that day because i was like oh my god like this is like this is what I i'm was a like, part of here. right now bro yeah exactly and i because i only see videos of like our show from like like recorded videos on right. flow and like so seeing it performed i was like damn this is such a cool show yeah, dude we are so good yeah. right now <laughs> 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 no, yeah, and so yeah, so uh, I will say that, like, I will say that I'll say, um, boss, like, hmm, damn, I want to say, I will say, number two is a tie between like Boston and Blue Coats 2022. I love okay. Rift Center Relations and Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost was so good, and I loved it a lot. Honestly, you know, hold on, I'll give it to Paradise Lost because I love, I- I'll give Hell it to yeah. Paradise Lost. <laughs> it-, it was a hard decision, but I'll give it to Paradise Lost. Show. Uh, it was a gr- it was a cool phenomenal. show. It was phenomenal show, phenomenal show. If I can yeah. also, if I can give an honorable mention to the Blue Coats Alumni Corps from 2022. Also, oh hell yeah, that too. <laughs> that was yeah, that that was that was that great. Was that great. was great as well. Yeah, and then number one, um, because it's the show that I saw that made me want to do drum core. I'm gonna yeah. give it to 2017 BD Metamorph, and yeah. people are gonna people are gonna say what they're gonna say about it. They're like, I'm like. It's funny. And I love saying that it's my favorite show because I get to make jokes with my friends who are like, oh my God, this is like the hidden gem of DCI. Oh my God, this is like <laughs> stuff like that. Where it's like, it's, it's really not. This super like, underrated I'm, show. You guys have probably never heard of it before. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> like, bro, everybody and their grandma knows about like the Blue Devils Metamorph. in like 2017 yeah. and Metamorph. Yeah, but like that was the. And I'm going to give more context into like why I love it because in tw- um, I have. Like I've had staff that have marched that show, right? That have like taught me, yeah. Like uh, Trevor Stoyanovich, he's now caption head at Blue Knights. Yeah, he's co caption head at Vish, and he was my he was my he was on my Vish staff in twenty two at PC wow. and twenty three. And I remember in twenty two, this is I wasn't even contracted yet. During an audition, uh, one of my our friends, and a uh, shout out to them um they their band director sent them to go audition for pacific crest and they had no yeah. idea what drum corps was they just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> it was this, so bizarre and we were yeah. like being like like hey so they got a contract and they're like hey so i've never seen a drum corps show my band director kind of just told me to audition to this mm. thing and i kind of just got in and so we were the first show we played them was like i think like bd 2017 because yeah. it was like such a popular show uh-huh. and then trevor comes up and he's seeing us watch like the mellophone head cam because it's his mellophone head cam mm-hmm. and he's like oh you're watching my head cam and you're like what do you mean and he's like look at the name and it's it says right there like, Trevor. And, then, <laughs> and that yeah it was like a like that was like a it that's clicked so in my cool. mind i was like oh like that's him mm-hmm. that's him and he's he's my stuff like not like a not like a fangirl moment but it was like a cool moment where that's like, really cool though yeah because like he kind of is like if i had to say he's he is kind of like my hero because like i was watching the head cam and now he's like my He's like, like he's like on my staff and he's teaching me. Right. And so like it was like a really cool kind of like thing to like have that happen. You know. It's like now that I've seen you do, like I want to go do what you've done. Like I want to go do that too. Yeah, and like, um, because, like, yeah. So that's for a personal reason. That is will always be my favorite show. It got me into drone core, and I've gotten to meet people who've done that show and like, like got taught by staff who have marched that show. 
and it was just it's will forever be like my favorite show the reason why i love doing this activity and still do it yeah it's an incredible show yeah 100 Mm percent. that was my second year in the activity and for me like that was that was the reason why i switched up because originally after my first summer i was like bro i gotta go do crown like crown's brass line (laughs) is the best brass line in dci like the way they do it nobody's doing it like that and then that metamorph came and i was like i might be a bd guy now (laughs) i might just be a bd guy now Cause like yeah, cause crown, crown like, crown in sixteen, like BD seventeen, like Santa Clara Vanguard like eighteen, like they're yeah. like gateway. There's those are like gateway shows for like people, you know. Yeah. Like that's that's all that's I, I like to put it like that because it was kind of a gateway for me to like see this is like cool drum core stuff, right. and then people can like go back and like watch other shows and like geek out about all that cool stuff. But like right. those shows like in those times were like people's like introduction to drum core. It's what made so, them like, want to do it. Yeah, and so like just because it's so popular doesn't make make it a bad show, and it has like value to like people who like saw it for the first time and made them right. want to do the activity. That like you know like that like tons of people have like loved and still love and watch and perform and do all this. It's it's great. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. That is incredible. Last couple of questions here for us to round us out here. Um, what are you most excited for coming up on your third year back with PC three year vet? You guys are on the rise right now making statements what are you most excited about for the 2024 season man uh, to be honest i'm just excited to do the thing one more time especially with like friends oh this is the age out oh sorry no 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 no, sorry this is not the age out this is not that say i'm like bro we have this is the age out we gotta gotta talk about that i like that oh no i wouldn't i would have said it i'm very fortunate and i will say this because i get a bonus here but like Ah. i just clicked by because on the D, on the DCI website, I think the cutoff is the first of June or the third of June. I think the yeah, third of June. something like that. My birth my birthday is the fifth of June, so like I oh. squeezed by barely. I squeezed by barely by so I get my bonus here. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's because having marched twenty two and twenty three, having experienced those audition, the mm-hmm. process of auditioning for those cores, the just the level that the core is at and the love that we're getting now has like i didn't think that i like would ever happen yeah and so it just makes me more like even more excited to just come back yeah and just do it again with the people yeah, that and just, love just being with. just do it again it's because after like after like you know your off season you're practicing once you're actually in like auditions and like doing rehearsals like it just felt like you never left yeah and but I, what I will say though is I'm, I'm kind of excited about kind of going um, to like, like and looking forward to a little bit the the new core of the crest, but back at Mount San Antonio College. Yeah, it's like it is sad and unfortunate that like we don't get the Rose Bowl. Yeah, but it's still like a cool like little call back to like where we used to have like this home show. Right, and because from what I know they're splitting that into two days, and mm-hmm. the first day is for uh, like a bunch of like high school like students and like band students to come and watch and they get discounted tickets oh. and they could they could like have that experience of like drum corps yeah. so it'll be a lot of them and so it'll be my first time performing for like some of my students uh-huh. like also you know right because like which that's yeah. like such a and, cool moment right there that you get to teach them and then they get to come out and watch you like that is super special yeah and so like that'll be like a cool feeling and like the thing is because like the people that I've saw in 2019, they're the reason why I want to do drum core. Right. And I get to be the reason why some other kids get to do drum core. Yeah. And it's it's like I love I love stuff like that. Like it's it's really cool. It's like a very full circle moment. The moment where you get to see a kid and their reaction and you get like you have that moment where you remember when you were that kid and you had that same reaction to watching a group, watching something live, and you're just like whoa that's so sick and anytime you as a performer now on the other side and you get to do that for somebody else whether it's a show a lot or like an opportunity like these which are always the best on tour if you ever get to have a clinic opportunity or whatever i think those are some of the most rewarding days on tour because you guys get to be rock stars you you're rock stars for the whole day whether it's good or bad or indifferent like the performance itself which the staff will tell you after be like hey i know we're here for the kids but that was bad 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been a part of yeah. I've been a yeah, part of groups yeah. like that before where we do the we do the clinic day and everything. We're all, everyone's cheering, all the the audience, the kids, everyone's clapping. We're like, wow, I guess we did good. Staff was like, that was terrible. Like we have so much to work on tomorrow. <laughs> and we're yeah, like, hey. yeah, exactly. but the kids loved it though. <laughs> the kids loved it. That's yeah, that's. But that's yeah, what it's all about. Know. When you get that oh, yeah, moment sure. to give back to the people that watch you and you get to inspire another individual to do this activity that's one of the most rewarding parts of tour so i think yeah any any chance you get to have a moment like that in your career that's that's something you'll never forget i really oh yeah yeah 100 it's yeah and like if we're talking like more recent too i'm just looking forward to like our show reveal everyone's been waiting for like at least at pc they're waiting for what the show's gonna be um the stuff that we do have now is so cool and I just I'm I'm waiting for it to be fully revealed. Can, we get, any, for whatever can we get any details now? <laughs> no. Without giving the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I no. tried. I love doing it on this no. podcast. I love trying to get details. I'm like, can we get can we get a snippet? Can we get something? I like that. I like that. No, I'm just I'm just um if I will say one thing. I'm I'm very excited for this year. Yeah. Like I thought I was excited to March 23. I'm really excited to March 24. So I'm just going to put that out there right now. So it's exciting. It's a very exciting time. I love it, dude. (laughs) I love seeing groups on the rise. Like that's what I love talking about on here is groups that don't get enough shine that are currently on the rise right now. PC spirit of Atlanta, the the last two episodes we've been talking about them and it's just like cults too. the episode before that, like getting into that, like, these the, these groups that are on the rise they need they need that shine dude they're doing incredible things right now um mm-hmm. last little question here though to kind of wrap us up i always love asking this question just because for everybody it's a different answer i think one of the most beautiful things about this activity is that we all have a different journey to get to where we are in our drum corps career wherever in life we all have a different story to get to where we are um and it's just also so funny to ask a question because every time i do everyone's just like <sighs> But um, last question here for you. What does drum corps mean to you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, because I mean, like, damn, I wish I could prepare because now I'm going to be like, it, it's, there's so much <laughs> I want to say. But like, drum corps is more than just like a, the more than just like a hobby that like yeah. I do for like a summer. And it's like I I want to describe it. It's like it's in this like it's so hard to explain to someone who even does drum corps what drum right. corps means to me. It's like as hard as explaining what drum corps is to someone who doesn't know what drum corps is. Right. Like it's like drum corps is to me, or what like I from what I've experienced at PC because that's the only drum corps experience I've had. Right. Is it's it's all about like like love like it's about people all coming together under the same goal Mm -hmm. and you know they're just as motivated as you and just as excited to be there as you yeah coming together and put together an incredible product and while this activity is getting kind of niche and more expensive to do it's just it's a privilege to just to, it's a privilege to do this and it's something that i like i never take for granted honestly yeah there's nothing quite like drum corps where you spend your time with like all these people mm-hmm. and you just like you're doing something you know like people have stuff they're passionate about like whether it's like people like comparable to like sports if you've done sports it's like that but now imagine it's like 80 plus days of like just doing the thing with, with the you and your time. team yeah, exactly. And it's it's not just a team. It's like it's family. Yeah. I I will say it's family. Like I I've like I love everybody that I've marched with, had the opportunity to march with. Yeah. If you have been if you are in Pacific Crest or a fan of Pacific Crest or a March Pacific Crest in the past, then like like I like I thank you because like people yeah. are like it's like people that you like you that paved the way to, for like people like me and people in the future who like love this activity and will look right. back and like find something and be a part of something greater than themselves. Yes. And I feel like that's what I really realized in 23 was like, I never thought that like, or in the history of the activity for like Pacific Crest of like my organization, 
mm-hmm. that we could break top 12. But, and no one knew we were going to do it in 23. No one was like, this is the goal. We're going to break top 12. We're just yeah. like, we're just going to do the thing. Have we're going to have our best summer and we're going to put our best show out on the field every day. And so being a part of, I guess, if I had to answer it, I guess being a part of something greater than myself is yeah. like why I love it because it really am. It's like, it's the whole, it's the whole group. It's for the fans. And it's, I, there's really nothing like it. Honestly, no. there's nothing there's nothing like it. I've tried to find it and I've tried to always make like analogies to I'm a big sports guy. So like for me, like always trying to find, but I just don't think there's nothing like this activity in drum corps where you have so many people working together and to try to build something bigger than themselves. No one's doing it for like no one's no one's doing this like athletes do where when you get into the professional side of things because this is for us like it's been said forever but this is marching's major league this is the highest professional level that you can do marching band at and most athletes when they get to that professional level they got to start worrying about money they got to start worrying about providing all of these things so they can be on teams but they still got to be looking out for them and looking out for number one and making sure that they're providing and they're, you know, doing what they got to do for themselves. And it's just, there's nothing like drum corps where you get these kids. And like you said, like all these people that come together bought in the same amount, no one's backing out. Like everyone's there because they're all bought in and wanting to do this thing and wanting to build something special together. And it's like that getting that experience where you have 154 people on the same field at the same time, all bought in at the same level. Everyone's committed to just doing this thing and being there for each other and not just performing to scores or whatever, but performing to make the best product for each other. And just that whole, that whole camaraderie, the whole family that you create every year and the people that you get to meet and the places that you get to see. I just don't think there's anything like it, um, which I think is just beautiful about it. And it's just really cool. For example, this, what we're doing right now, getting to hear about, because mm-hmm. I only marched, I marched Oregon and Blue Knights. So I was on the West Coast my whole career. So for me, like I always saw PC, but I never got to really meet and talk with people who marched there and get to just know about, you know, other people's cultures, what it's like at different, you know, different cores, what it's like, you know, just being taught by different staff, all this kind of cool stuff. It's just like stuff like this, I just think is what makes the activity so beautiful at the end of the day. Um, and with that, I think that's honestly, it's a good stopping point for us, honestly. Yeah, um, that's, that's a wrap, man. Yeah. That's a wrap with this one. But um, this has been this has been an incredible conversation. This has been super fun for me. Um, just getting to learn so much about Pacific Crest in general. I've never really gotten to dive into it a lot and really talk to somebody who has been with the core. And right now, I thought it was just so cool to have you on with your story, but also PC, the way that the core is just building and hitting its stride and so many cool things are happening for you guys. And I'm just so excited to see what you guys do this summer. But with that, Alberto, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a blast just getting to meet and talk with you and hear your story. Um, we need that link, by the way. I'm going to definitely need that link afterwards because we're going to need, we got to promote the homies yeah. musics. And the we the champions. We gotta, we gotta, I'll, I'll link everything. I'll link we got to everything. promote the homies music. We got to promote the merch. All the good things. Um, let's see. I don't think I got anything else to plug, honestly. Um, fill out the Google form down below. I'm trying to be on the podcast. Um, go check out our other videos. We got great content. Um, great episodes with some incredible people. We got this episode and one more episode after this before we take a small break for May. Um, just kind of getting ready for spring training tour, the whole summer series and everything. And also I'm moving. So like a lot of things are going to happen for me in May. So, but, um, with that guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it every single week, getting to hear the comments down below and what you guys think about the episodes. Um, it's just really cool to create a conversation with the community every week. Um, it's just been really cool getting to build this podcast up and see all the people that watch and just to create a conversation in the community. And I really enjoy it. So thank you, Alberto, for coming on. This has been incredible. Thank you guys for watching at home, wherever you watch the podcast, wherever you listen, wherever. Um, This has been episode 24 of the Meet the West podcast. We will see you guys next week.